I like sitting down teaching in here. Is that okay with everybody? And uh, thank the Lord that we can do that. I told you last time I read in the Word of God where Jesus sat and taught him. I thought, well, I'm going to try that. That's pretty good, huh? I'll try this preaching sometime. Anyway, I want you to turn your Bible, if you would please, to the book of 2 Timothy, chapter number 3. 2 Timothy, chapter number 3. I will speak for, uh, for a few moments in our gospel hour on the gospel award, the gospel award. And uh, the Bible says in 2 Timothy, chapter number 3, and uh, verse number 15, do you see it? It says, and that from a child... Thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. The Bible says that from a child you've known the holy scriptures. And then it goes on to say, in verse 16, All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. So what is the purpose of the Bible? It's to make sure we know Christ. It says, which are able to make the wise unto salvation. And then once you get saved, you need to know uh, doctrine. And you need to have your life on track. And so for reproof, for correction, and for instruction. Now, there's, I won't take the time today to talk about those different words. But I can tell you, everyone... Every one of those words means something special, and that's the power of God's Word. Many years ago, when I came to know the Lord, my wife and I, uh, we got, when we were saved, we wanted to find something to do in the church. And so the pastor talked about working in the bus ministry. Well, we said, okay. Our children had ridden a bus before, and, and as a child, I rode a bus when I lived in Chattanooga, my, my mother, my brother, my two sisters, we rode a bus to the Highland Park Baptist Church when we were little children. And so I, my wife and I, when I got saved, we started a bus route. And we lived in the Cape. Now, the Cape was just a fishing community then, can you imagine? And uh, just a few thousand people lived here. And um, so we started, as far as I know, we started the first bus route in Cape Coral. And so we started knocking on doors, getting boys and girls to ride a bus. Now, I didn't know a whole lot about things. Matter of fact, I'm still on a learning curve, but I remember getting started. And um, and so we just load up the bus. I said, what are we supposed to do? They said, get kids on the bus and bring them to Sunday school. Well, that's what we did. Now, really, to be honest with you, I was not mature enough in the Lord to be doing what I was doing, but I wanted to do it. I wanted to reach people in Cape Coral, so we did. And by the way, we were we were here for 11 months before God stirred my heart to go prepare for the ministry. But in that 11 months, we saw uh, 95 people come to know the Lord on that bus route, isn't it? So we were just thrilled. Well, anyway, we'd fill the bus up. We'd go to church. I'd open the door in Fort Myers. Uh, we'd drive over to Fort Myers. I'd open the door, and the kids would just run out of that bus and just like wild Indians in Sunday school, you know. And they were good kids, but they weren't prepared for that many kids. We just packed the bus out. And so one day a, a lady came to me, and she was so upset with me. She was just, I mean, fuming upset. And um, she she got mad at me. She said, you're, you're ruining everything here, bringing all these kids. And uh, they're just wild, they're wild. And I thought, well, you know, they need to be tamed. I guess that's what we're doing, right? But anyway, she says, you need to teach them something on the bus before they get here. And I said, well, what should I teach them? And she said, teach them the Romans road. And I thought, the Romans road? I never heard of the Romans road. I thought, what is the Romans road? And uh, I said, I don't know what that is. She said, oh, it's how to be saved. And I said, well, if you'll write it out, I'll teach it to them. So she was upset. So she went in and, and put down these verses, just the references on a piece of paper. And she made a list of verses. And so my wife and I took that list and 
we typed it out and, and made little papers on it, wrote some of them out. And so we started teaching children how to memorize Scripture. And so in order to get them to do it, and it did calm them down, by the way. <laughs> and so my wife used to make these little special little ornaments and things. She would make these little things. You could put them on a Christmas tree or put them on a little shelf or something. And she loved doing that. You know, just uh, she's always loved working with crafts. And so we said, if you memorize the Scripture, when you get on the bus, we'll give you one of these things. And so the kids began working at memorizing the scripture. And so we had a lot of different kids on our bus. One family that rode our bus was some children of a man that I'd worked with before I got saved. His name was Jerry. And um, there was a time in his life, him and, him and his wife were together. And one day she decided to leave him. So she took all the kids and she left. And she didn't tell him where she was going. She ran off with somebody, you know, it was, she was lost. And, and so Jerry worked with us. And so every weekend, Jerry would spend his weekend going all over Florida trying to find her, try to find family members and friends they had. And one day he found her in Bartow, Florida. And she had her kids with her and she's living with somebody. And he pleaded with her to come back. And she said, I don't want to come back. So he left and came back home. And then he was working with us. And he just become a hopeless drunk. I mean, honestly, he, 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 he couldn't hold down a job. And so he was my friend. I hated it, you know, but nevertheless. And so one day a call came because um, the kids knew that he worked for me and worked with us. And I got a call, and the secretary got a hold of me. And the word was that Jerry's wife had committed suicide, and he had to go get the kids. They were there in Bartow, a neighbor had them, and they were waiting for him to come. Well, I couldn't, now I wasn't saved. And so I remember going to get Jerry at his house and telling him that his wife has committed suicide. And he's got to go get the kids. So I drove him to Bartow, Florida. And um, we got those little kids. I never will forget it. But it was one of the saddest trips. You can only imagine what it was like. I didn't know the Lord. I didn't have any comforting words. And so those kids were just devastated. When we got to the place where they were, there was a mobile home park there. And we got to the place. They, the neighbors told us where the children were. And we went. And they would, you can imagine. So the story was that she sat down in the living room. She'd called Jerry after she'd had her dose of all she wanted. And she said to him, I want to come home. Now this for, for I was saved. She said, I want to come home. He said, I don't want you to. And she said, if you don't let me come home, I'm going to kill myself. And he said, go ahead. They were just fussing and fighting all the time. Both of them, you know, just crazy drunks. And so she set the five children down in the living room, took a 38 and said, your father told me to do this and shot herself. So that was the condition, those children, when we got there. They got in my car. We started bringing them back. And I didn't know anything to tell Jerry. I had nothing to say. Of course, you know, he blamed himself and the kids blamed him. It was just a... I mean, honest to goodness, it was so sad. I took him to his house, and um, I didn't know anything else to do for him. He couldn't work because he couldn't hold a job down. The kids, you know, were devastated. It was just a couple, few weeks after that that I got saved. And when I got saved, I wanted to do something for God. I remember talking to Jerry after I got saved, and he didn't want nothing to do with God, nothing to do with it. But when I started my bus route, I went to see him and asked if those children could ride our bus to Sunday school. And he said, yes. So his five children, the youngest was just three. She wasn't old enough to ride a bus, but nevertheless, her name was Mona. She rode the bus too. And they were part of the crowd that was driving that church crazy when I opened the door. And so, and so uh, when we started memorizing the scripture, and uh, I was so glad I was saved. We started memorizing scripture. I, um, 
I would listen to those little kids quote the verse. And Mona would try to quote it. I used to joke, say she couldn't read. And I don't know how she learned. I, then I didn't know how she learned anything. Like we'd take the verse for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Romans 3.23. And uh, she'd just say, all been bad and God's mad. I said, that's good enough for me. <laughs> but anyway, um, she, they all went through the Bible verses. And the last verse that we taught the children was John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. And so we gave that verse to the boys and girls, and they went home on that Sunday. I dropped them off. I never could go in Jerry's house. He would sometimes just open the door, and sometimes he wouldn't. But the kids ran in the house, and, and so they had their little verse to memorize, and they had their little thing that my wife had made that week. They had gotten for memorizing the verse. And so... That week, I got a phone call, or my wife got a phone call from a man named Mitch, who lived in the same mobile home park that Jerry lived in. And she said, and Mitch was a Baptist deacon, a little Baptist church uh, down in Pine Island. And so he told my wife, tell Brother Tom that Jerry got saved today. He said, I was coming home and, and Jerry was in the, in the street and stopped me. And said, I got I to gotta be saved. I can't do this no more. And Jerry led him to Christ. So she told me that when I got home, I could hardly believe it. So I got in my car. I didn't even have time to clean up. I was so excited. I had a little giveaway Bible. And I drove out to his mobile home where he lived. I lived right there on Pine Island Road, that little mobile home park. The only one in Cape Coral, really. When I knocked on his door... He opened the door, and for the first time, he let me in his house. And when I walked in, there was beer cans literally everywhere you could put a beer can. And Jerry was very tearful, and I mean, he was, he had been really pouring his heart out to God. And those kids were so excited. And Jerry sat down at the couch, I sat beside him. And I looked in the middle of those beer cans, and right in the middle of all of them was that Bible verse, John 3, 16, on a piece of paper. And I said to Jerry, tell me what happened. His first conversation I'd had with him since his wife had killed herself. And I other than say hi. I said, tell me what happened. And he said, I just couldn't live with it anymore. I just can't live with it anymore. And I talked to Mitch, and we both knew Mitch. Before I came to know the Lord, Mitch was a nut you had to avoid. But after I got saved, he was a dear friend. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> she, he said, I, I had to I stop Mitch. And um, he said, I wanted to be saved. And so I said, well, I, tell me how it all came about, Jerry. And he started telling me that every night that he would work over with those verses with those kids. And he worked with little Mona because she couldn't read. So she took most of his time. So in a drunken stupor, he'd go through the Bible verse and help her memorize the verse so she could get on the bus, be like the rest of the kids. Little did he know we would have given her the thing anyway, you know. But And so by teaching those children those Bible verses and letting them say to him the verses, saying the verses to him, God got a hold of his heart and he got saved. So I told him the next thing you need to do is follow the Lord and believe his baptism. And he promised to ride the bus Sunday with his kids. I got in my car and I started home. And I'd been me memorizing, meditating on verses. I got in my car and I was riding home. And I thought of that verse, Psalm 107, verse 20. He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destruction. And uh, while I was going home, God really burned that verse in my heart, the power of God's word. And so I learned that God could do something. Well, the reason we had 95 people saved on that bus route is because those kids were memorizing the verses, saying it to their parents to learn it, and getting on the bus and quoting it. And so God began to work. When I got saved, after I went to Chattanooga to prepare for the ministry and whatever God had for me, my wife and I got a bus route, 
And so we started working on our bus route. And of course, the first thing we did was start teaching kids how to memorize these verses because we'd seen what could happen when you do it. And so we would have little special things for the boys and girls if they could get on the bus. And so all of a sudden our bus route began to grow and we started getting people saved. And, and it was amazing what happened. I mean, God was doing a work, you know. The children were preparing people to hear the gospel. And so I cannot tell you all the families that I saw come to know the Lord. I'm, I was thinking about when I was uh, talking to you about this. And I remember one night, uh, Nancy and I were at a house and, and the, the little boy had been riding a bus and his wife had gotten saved. Really nice family. She worked as a, a clerk, a, a photographer. What do you call it that does the thing in the court? Yes, in the court. <laughs> and um, her husband was just a, a hardworking man in, in the city. And um, she'd gotten saved, but he didn't want nothing to do with it. And so his son had been working on memorizing verses, had one, had, had, had got it all done. And Nancy and I were at the house to talk to him because he wanted to follow the Lord and believe his baptism because he'd been saved, memorizing these verses and gotten saved. And so she was excited about it. She was going to get baptized with him. And I remember sitting there and, um, and I went through and I asked him, I, I asked the little boy, I said, now he's learned these verses. And I said, he's, he, he's learned the story of Jesus. And as I would go through the verses, the boy would begin to say them. And I was telling him, I said, the Bible teaches us that we're all sinners for all. And then the little boy was, and then all of a sudden he would be saying some of the verses. So that man had been learning the verses along with his son. And so when I got through, I said, I'm going to pray for your family. And um, God had prepared his heart. And so while I was praying, I said, with our heads bowed and eyes closed, I said, I told him, I said, I want you to pretend I left the room. And if you'd be willing to trust the Lord like your son and your wife, I want you to take my hand as though you're taking the Lord's hand. I want you to know Jesus. And that little boy started crying, uncontrollable. Please, Daddy. Please, Daddy. Please, Daddy. Please, Daddy. Please, Daddy. And he's praying, you know, and I'm thinking, wow. He reached over and grabbed my hand. And I remember sitting there thinking, good night. There's power in the gospel. And that, that family literally soaked my sleeve with their tears, praying that, that night. Nancy and I and all of us were just crying and weeping because God had done something. And we were doing that on our bus route, and nobody else knew what we were doing. And other buses started hearing about it, and they wanted to know. So we started teaching some other buses. And so we decided to call it the Gospel Award. And... Um, you know, it just kind of evolved into that. And so we started seeing people saved. And it was like God had touched Highland Park again with that, with that work. And we started seeing scores and scores of people saved. As a result, I ended up uh, being on staff and being the director of the buses. And we had 65 bus routes. And so we taught every bus in the, on the bus route, the bus captains, how to do it. Some of them did it, and some of them just played around with it. But the ones that did it, it changed the, the lives of people. And so I learned that there's power in the gospel. So what we've done here over the years, we have a thing called the Gospel Award. And uh, I've given you this, and it works not just for children, but it works for adults too. And so I have, um, I want to start using this. In the gospel, um, in the nursing homes. Brother Mark, can I have one of the uh, bracelets? And I've given you today, I've given you today, um, this, the track, I've given you three things. Number one, I've given you a, a gospel track. It's in colors. It shows you how to teach it. The other, I've given you a little pledge for the gospel. I think that's a great thing to do. But I've also given you a little slip of paper that says the gospel award. Now, we have this developed for children, for children's ministry, and it's really involved. I got a little book at the whole Gospel Award program. But what I want to do, I want to introduce into our Gospel Hours, our nursing home ministries, our Gospel Hours. I want to introduce this and get our preachers to start helping people memorize the plan of salvation. 
Now, we got a beautiful certificate we give adults. We have one we give children. We have all this stuff developed for children, teenagers, and now adults. And we have a beautiful certificate that we can give to people. Um, my wife has one, a little gospel award certificate, and we put it in a nice case. And so for anyone in our gospel hours who will memorize the plan of salvation and do what you have to do to receive a gospel award, our church will give them one of the gospel awards. You can present it to them in the service, and uh, it'll be a special thing. So to make it easier for them, I printed our gospel track in giant size. <laughs> it's large print so that everybody can read it easily. And so we have these. So I'll tell you how it works, all right? So first of all, we have a little bracelet, and this is what we use with children. And if you'll notice, I have a gospel pen. I want all of our gospel preachers, all of our men in our church to have a gospel pen. Plus, we don't mind people in these facilities having one, but you have to be careful about it. And we also got gospel brace necklaces and gospel keychains. But we use a little gospel bracelet for the boys and girls, and I think this would work also for the adults in the, care, in the gospel hours. And so if they would be willing, I'd like for our guys to be able to explain what it is, show the gospel award, and we want you to get it. Now, here's where it works. I want you to take this little sheet of paper you got with me. Would you do it? I want you to look at it. It says a gospel award, and then the verse is Romans 1.16. How many know that verse? For I'm not a what? Shame to the gospel of Christ, for it is the of God unto salvation to everyone that, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Now I wrote this gospel pledge for boys and girls. It says, I pledge allegiance to the gospel, the glorious gospel of Christ, God's message for all people. I will faithfully publish it among all nations until the Lord's return. For I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. By the way, that's a good pledge for everybody, isn't it? I pledge allegiance to the glorious gospel of Christ, God's message for all people. I will faithfully publish it among all nations until the Lord's return. For I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. And so we teach boys and girls to salute and pledge. <laughs> a pledge allegiance to the glorious gospel of Christ. <laughs> oh, anyway, might as well have fun with it, right? So here's where it works, all right? Number one, you have to memorize the gospel verses and you have to memorize them every week. Um which means you've got to memorize them, and then you've got to tell them to a family member and a friend. So, number two, then you've got to tell the story of Jesus by using the gospel-colored bracelet or the pen or the keychain or the necklace. But you've got to tell the story of Jesus using the gospel colors. Now, one Sunday, I'm going to have Brother Matt come and go through the gospel colors with you. And talk about how to do that. He's done it. He's very good at it. But the little bracelet has the five colors. And uh, you have the gold. You have the black. You have the red. You have the white. You have the green. And uh, uh, we, um, we do these bracelets. Now what you want to do. You want to teach what each one means. Now. So here's the verses. First of all. You got to memorize the verse. It says for God so loved the world. That he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. John 3, 16. That's an easy verse, isn't it? Come on, you think that's easy? And then you got to tell a friend, a family member, and then have them initial it. Now, I'd like to get a friend and a family member. And we'll have to correct that little word, or. We'll make it and. And so the friend signs one, and the, and the family member signs one. And so then you've got to also... Use every verse. So there's five verses. That's pretty easy, isn't it? And then once you do the five verses, then you have to tell 
Huh? Oh, in the back, excuse me, six, seven verses. Thanks for turning it over. I kept thinking for five, seven. Well, that's easy to do. That's seven weeks. And then you got to use the bracelet and you got to tell the story of Jesus. By the way, if someone were, were to ask you, tell me the story of Jesus, what would you say? Well, let me tell you, I can say it. Well, first of all, here's what you say. It all starts with God's love. And that's the gold. The story of Jesus is that God loves us. The Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. You ought to know what John 3.16 teaches, that we are loved, we have worth, that we can have hope and our life can have purpose. And so why did God send Jesus into the world? Because the Bible says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. The Bible teaches us we're all sinners. The Bible says that I'm a sinner. I know I don't look like one, but I am. And the Bible also says Brother Mark's a sinner. He looks more like a sinner than me. No, I'm kidding. Now, why are we sinners? We're sinners because we're born sinners. Here's what the Bible says in Romans chapter 5, verse number 12. Wherefore, as by one man sinned into the world, and death passed upon all men for all sin. We inherited a sinful nature. You see, it's not what we do that makes us a sinner. What we do proves we're a sinner. It's the evidence. So the Bible is true when the Word of God says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But God loves us. And so the Bible also says that God loves us so much that He paid for our sin. And so you get to the red. The Word of God says, But God commendeth His love toward us. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. You see, well, the Bible says the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God. And so you go through and you explain God loves you. We're all sinners. Payment of sin is death. Jesus died and paid our sin debt in full. He paid our debt. We were redeemed, not, not with corruptible things as silver and gold. By the way, these are things everybody ought to know that's trying to lead, win people to Christ. We were redeemed, not with corruptible things like silver and gold. You can't buy your way to heaven. You can't work your way to heaven. There's only one thing that can pay for your, your way to heaven. Only one thing. You know what that is? The blood of Jesus. That's what the Bible teaches us. By the way, that's in the big gospel thing. That it's the blood of Christ. And um, the Bible says, we will not, read, in verse, 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 18 and 19, you will not redeem with corruptible things, but with the precious blood of Jesus. Do you know, nothing can pay for sin except Jesus' his blood. He died for us. Now, how do you know that God was satisfied with his sin? Because he got up from the grave. Now, God wants you to go to heaven. God loves us. We're all sinners. Jesus came into the world and he died for our sin. He paid our sin debt in full. Heaven can be yours. It's a gift. Jesus said, for God so loved the world that he gave. Now, there's one thing about a gift. Gift is not yours if you don't receive it. You have to receive it. A gift's not something you earn. It's not something that, that you pay for. It's something someone else paid for and gives to you. Jesus paid for our salvation. He offers it to us. It's a free gift. It's ours when we receive it. And so the Bible says... That whosoever, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Salvation is real simple. You have to ask God to save you. And once you are saved, you have new life. That's what this green represents. You begin to grow as a Christian. And every Christian ought to grow and go. Amen. Now the story of Jesus is that God loves us. He came into this world he died for our sins. He paid our sin debt in full. He shed his blood for our sin. He redeemed us with his precious blood. When you receive Christ as your Savior, then Jesus wants you to grow. He taught us how to grow when he was here. 
And he also gave us, an, gave us an example of what we should do as we grow. We're to go. And so the green represents growing and going. And we want to give you a certificate, the gospel award, that says that you know Christ, that you're going to grow in the Lord, and you're going to go and tell others about Jesus. And we ask you to wear the pin or wear the bracelet or wear something with the gospel colors so you can be a faithful witness to God. Now, how many would like to receive the gospel award? Then all you got to do is read these verses. I've given you a little sheet of paper. If you'll read the verses, and every week you come in our class, you'll say the verse to Mark or Matt and let them check it off. Say it to a family member, a friend. And when you get through the seven verses, if you can tell the story of Jesus, we're going to give you a beautiful certificate. Amen. And you'll be able to teach others. Won't that be nice? Hey, you know what? These people in these caring facilities, this is not where they want it to be, but it's their world now. And they can be a witness and they can reach every single person. That's why we give the gospel award to children in school. That's why we give the gospel award to adults so they can do it at work. Father, thank you again for your goodness. Help us in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Thank you.